Report Hashtag 31005, Class Alpha, submitted by witness on Saturday, November 5, 2011. Early morning walker witnesses a Sasquatch pouncing on a snake east of Cross Villier, 2005 season, Summer State, Tennessee County, Cumberland County location details. It was within a few miles of the community stables and Dorsester Golf Course, roughly between Fairfield Glade, P. Vine RD, I 40, and the village of Crab Orchard, but beyond the FFG subdivisions. Nearest town, Crossville is closest town in the county. Nearest road, P. Vine Road observed, I live in a retirement community known as Fairfield Glade on the Cumberland Plateau in East Tennessee. Knoxville is the nearest large city and is 65 miles east. Our little community is surrounded on almost three sides by a state forest and the Catoosa Wildlife Refuge. We have an overabundance of protected wildlife of all kinds, including too many deer, in my opinion, that venture, at will, into our community. To Always the exercise by hiking the heavily forested back roads and trails near our home instead of playing golf as my husband did. I never hiked more than six miles from home, and always in the early morning. One morning, I was approximately four miles from my home when I came upon an unexpected sunny clearing that seemed to have been an old road or path at one time because it was grassy and void of underbrush or trees. On my hikes I am normally under a full canopy of very tall trees. So the sunlight was an unexpected pleasure. As I rounded a curve and my eyes caught the filtered sunlight from the clearing, I observed a large ape-like creature jump from the woods and pounce at something on the ground. I abruptly froze. In a flash, the creature stood back up holding a long snake by the head. Just as quick as this happened, the creature disappeared back into the cover of the woods alongside the clearing. I remained still for a moment contemplating whether the animal had myself. seen me. I literally heard my heart beating. I quickly ruled out tree climbing and decided the only alternative was to turn in the opposite direction and run as fast as my legs would carry me. I ran nearly all the way home. I was so disturbed by what I had seen, I decided that no one would believe it, so I never told anyone. That was about five or six years ago, and my husband Over the has years, I have tried to convince myself that I really didn't see the thing that has so frightened me that morning in the woods. I tried to convince myself that I had somehow imagined it, however, the vivid memory persists. To this day, I have never set foot in any woods again, essentially breaking a very long-standing and much revered habit that day. I am still fearful of seeing that creature again. I have always been a sober-minded individual, not at all given to making up fantasies or stretching the truth as I know it. I was completely caught off guard and stunned the other I am now convinced that I actually did see what I thought I saw that day on my last hike. Your show also brought to mind the night a few years ago. This happened well after my experience in the woods. My husband and I were sitting on our deck looking up at the stars so clearly visible up here on a clear night in the dark woods of the Cumberland Plateau. We were quietly listening for the Whippoorwill who nests every year in the woods across our street. He calls relentlessly for a mate every night during season. Piercing through the peace and tranquility we heard the most horrific deep bellowing scream from what seemed like some distance away. We had both been leaning way back in our lawn chairs admiring the night sky, and almost fell out of our chairs in shock. I remember my husband abruptly stood up and said we should go inside and he added that he had never seen a mountain lion big enough to scream like that. I did not the make the mental heard and the creature I had seen a few years prior until I saw your show and heard your team members calling out to Bigfoot. Oh my gosh! That was the same sound. I must confess that I am a reluctant convert, also noticed, no, it started out as a typical day. Other witnesses, no witnesses to the sighting. Other stories, no because I have not told anyone about it for fear that I would be laughed at, and no one has confided anything similar to me either. Time and conditions, visual was early morning after daybreak. Filtered sunlight by nearby tall wooded canopy on all sides. Temp was moderately warm. Audio scream was around midnight or after in the spring. Clear and cool. Environment, the area is heavily wooded with tall old growth hardwood and pine canopies. The areas are not vast however like Washington and Alaska forests. There are hills and gullies lakes and a few meadows and some cliffs with visible views of the smoke east the by BFRO investigator Thomas Bruns, I contacted this witness and found her to be very credible. She has a professional business background, 
and is also a professional photographer. I have the following to add from our conversation, the area where her sighting occurred was on an old trail wide enough for one vehicle. The creature was described as having brown slash black hair, approximately 2 to 3 inches in length, which appeared muddy and unkempt. The head did seem to be larger in the back than the front sloping forward, and the neck was very short. The one cheek she could see appeared fat and the skin a black slash charcoal color in the sunlight. She only noticed one side of the head. The animal was estimated to be 6 feet in height and was viewed at a distance of around 100 feet. It was very agile as it jumped out and grabbed the snake. The animal appeared solid with equal girth between shoulders, chest, and body. This sighting occurred south of, of the Catoosa Wildlife Management Area, in middle-slash-north Tn. This area has 80,000 acres of protected land with numerous creeks, gorges, and abundant wildlife. The close proximity to Fairfield Glade allows these animals to wander freely in this developing community, providing a large local population of deer, turkey, and other wild animals. This entire area, overall, has the essentials for providing a prime Sasquatch habitat. This is a local topographic map of the area, with the red X marking the approximate location of the sighting. About BFRO investigator Thomas Bruns, Thomas Bruns resides in southeast Tien and is active in field research. He has a background in biology and is a medical professional. He has attended numerous BFRO and private expeditions since 2009.